Hi everybody, it's Ingrid here again and I would like to introduce you to my little polymer clay earring kit that I have available at the moment. Um, if you go to Deco Edge you will hopefully have found it there and bought yourself one and now you're deciding what are you going to make with this really cool kit. So what is in the kit? We've got some jewelry pliers and a rolling pin, a whole bunch of jewelry findings so you can make some earrings, a knife, please note this knife is extremely sharp and what I've done is I've actually, it's a very basic knife and I've put some washi tape on it to show you immediately where's the sharp side and where's the not sharp side, do not touch the sharp side. And then I've got some basic toolkits and you'll see each kit comes with a choice of either a round cutter or a teardrop cutter with a little stud as well. So you can choose which kit you prefer. And then of course we've got the polymer clay. The polymer clay that I'm using is, sorry, <laughs> it also comes with a tile to work on. The polymer clay that I use is the new polymer clay from Dala. It's a beautiful, beautiful clay. Um, when you get it, it's going to be quite firm. So you just take it out and you must just work with it a little bit to make it nice and soft. They call it conditioning. So basically what you do is you just play with it. You roll it into a sausage, fold it over, roll it again, and you'll find the more you work with it, the easier it is to work with and it gets a lot softer and it doesn't crack like that type of thing so you just got to keep working with it also when it's cold the weather is cold then um, it does take a little bit longer to condition your clay and this is what the dialer clay looks like but in this kit you're going to have your primary colors red red yellow and blue and then your black and white because i feel that you can really do a lot with those colors so to begin with I'm going to show you how to do a very basic Skinner blend and then we'll decide where to go from there. So I'm going to use red and white. When you're working with polymer clay, always have available some wet wipes and a piece of tissue paper, kitchen towel, because when you're working with white, it picks up dirt on your fingers if you're working with red and white or blue and white red and blue and black have particularly have got very strong pigment in them so sometimes you'll find a bit of a residue on your fingers like that <laughs> which you want to avoid so just before you work with white just give your hands a wipe and your surface a wipe just to be on the safe side and then dry it off. I always say to people that before you start working, you must have an idea in your head of what you actually want to do. And if there's any white involved, do that first. Let's really quickly pull out that little piece of red that's there. Okay, so using my knife, just gonna make sure that I'm in the camera. It's gonna cut off a little piece. And just condition it a bit more so the kind of blend I'm going to show you is called a Skinner blend and this is also I'm going to show you a way to do it where you don't need to use a pasta machine because when you're just starting out obviously you don't want to go and buy a clay roller or pasta machine because it's quite a investment and if you're not quite sure if this is where you want to go and what you want to do you don't really want to go and spend all that money. So just condition this a little bit more, roll it in a ball and then make it into a little teardrop shape. So round on that side and nice and sharp on this side. Pop that down. Next I'll take some red. You don't have to be too fussy about it being the same size. It doesn't really matter because it's going to blend into each other. Like that. Give it some conditioning. Roll 
relatively ball little ball and then just roll your teardrop shape like that right next you're going to take your two teardrops and you're going to put them together so that they line up nicely like that pop it down and roll it out this takes a long time you're going to roll it out probably about seven eight times just until you're ready for it so you're rolling it out and then roll it up as you work with it so it's going to get a lot easier to work because it gets warmer roll it out again It looks like you've lost a lot of the white, but if you look at it closely, you can see that the white is still underneath and it's still going to come through as you work with it. Roll it up. And what I do with the edges, as you're rolling it, it's going to get wider and wider. So I just kind of push down the edges to stick it and then push it together to make it a little bit shorter. And roll it out. <laughs> Stick. So you can see it's starting to blend a lot nicer now. Push it in. So this goes on for quite some time. little trick that you can do as well if it keeps pulling up like this it's very frustrating so what you can do just take a little piece of print normal printer paper just ordinary paper put it on top and roll it there and that stops it from sticking also very nice if you don't want to get your fingerprints and stuff on it I'm also rolling it with my hand like that so that if there's any bubbles trapped inside it will also pop those bubbles you can see it's going very nicely now see how nicely it's blending through so you can stop at any time it's completely up to you when you feel like you are happy with how it's looking you can stop I'm going to stop a little bit sooner than I should because for the sake of the video so you don't have to sit and watch sit and watch me doing this for hours and hours and hours obviously if you've got a pasta machine it goes so much quicker quite like how this looks okay let me just do one more because I can't help myself <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to leave it as is. You may find, I don't know if you can see here, there's like a little bubble. If you find you have little bubbles like that, all you do is you pick it up and you give it a little tug. And by tugging it like that, you get all your bubbles out. You don't want bubbles because when you're baking it, then the bubbles can pop in the oven and you get an uneven surface, which you don't want. Okay, so there's your little blend. So that's going to be my background for my earring. I'm going to use the round one. So this is my stud cutter, and this is for the actual earring. And we're going to do a little dangle like that. So you must make sure you've got enough clay that's going to make two, um, two earrings, obviously, because it's a pair. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to do this circle, but I'm going to cut it in half. So we've got a half circle for each because I didn't roll out enough clay <laughs> so what I can do what 
what are you going to do now with this beautiful background you can either use it as is and just do a very plain simple earring or you can do a um a hand sculpted flower or whatever you want with it so i'm just going to lightly press where i need to concentrate like that so now i know to work in that area so you can do a cane if you want to in fact that's exactly what i'm going to do so what i've done is i've taken i pre-blended these ones this was red blue and white which i just kept on mixing and mixing until it almost mixed into like a, a nice deep purple but i wanted to keep some of the the lines showing as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some yellow just a little bit of yellow and work it through this is a very very easy cane to do it's lots of fun and there's always a big surprise when you finish with it make a little sausage and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yeah, I'm taking some yellow and a little bit of red and I mix it together to make a nice orange So you can mix all these colors together so the primary colors you can mix all kinds of nice colors with them and to mix it you just put them together and you just keep on like you do when you condition it you just keep fold it over rub it in fold it over rub it in Make a little worm with that. And then I think I might go with, hmm, I'm not quite sure, maybe a bit of white. Okay. So now I've got my three colors together. Just squeeze it down on either side and twist it. Like that. Just push it in nicely so that it won't move around. And then I'm going to take my piece that I've got for the outside. So I'm making this a little bit thinner because my piece for the outside must wrap around it. I'm not sure it will like that so just keep turning it pull it slightly turn it and then it goes a lot thinner see the difference i'm going to let it overlap on the sides i can just cut that off okay now you're going to take your Piece from the outside that you're going to wrap it in and just wrap it around so that it just just touches I'm trying to do this close to the camera <laughs> I'm going to grab one of my tools here just to make it off the excess there we go put that to one side and just give it a nice roll so that it's properly wrapped now when you cut off the edge you can see you've got all your colors and each one should be slightly different so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut seven pieces the same size four oh. wrong way around okay 
and I'm going to make a little flower with them. So one in the middle and then wrap these around. Sorry, that's my voice. And it should fit nice and neatly. Give it a nice squeeze so that you can squeeze out any air bubbles and now you can see it's quite a big thick one so what we're going to do now is we want to try and reduce it so to reduce it you just roll it just keep it all nice in shape so you can roll it out and then just push, push it down and this will go on and on until it becomes the size that you want. So when you roll it, just widen your fingers as you roll, as soon as you can get a grip on it nicely. And keep rolling it out. And then we can just give it a cut. And you can see, it's got a tiny little cane those little canes inside is very cute so now what we're going to do is we're going to just cut off some slices if you find that it's when you cut it it kind of squishes a bit don't stress just roll it out again into a circle So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take my little pieces of sliced canes and put them all together. <laughs> so a lot easier said than done because it's so small and I'm trying to work fast. So it doesn't matter if you overlap slightly. I'll show you why now. And just keep going with your slices. I will put this in the meantime because it takes too long. So now we've got them all overlapping. Can you see where I am? I don't think so. Just move it close onto the camera. Okay, so we've got them all overlapping. And then I'm going to just take my rolling pin and roll it out. And look at that, it's almost like a kaleidoscope. It actually came out so much nicer than I was anticipating. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is, it doesn't look like I have enough for the stud, so I'm just going to put this on top of where my ring was. Just roll it in so that it connects nicely. And then I'm going to take my cutter, find a nice spot that looks the best. So we'll check what you're doing there. That looks cool. And give it a cut. What I can also do is instead of using this as a plain piece of red, I can even go with a half for my stud. Pull that off. Right. Now you'll find in your little bag of shapes, your cutters, you'll find a very small cutter, which is what I use to cut my holes in my earrings. So as it sits now, you can do a little hole there, and that you up there, or oh, I'll have to do another one. Now 
when you cut sometimes you'll find the cutters don't cut it very neatly you can either bake it as is or you can pick it up gently and just round off your edges and neaten up your sides otherwise you can use um, a nail file just to file it off afterwards so you'll see also bear in mind don't go too close to the edge you want to make sure it's not going to snap so you want to be able to put your jump ring there okay and now i'm going to cut this in half you can measure it i'm going with luck <laughs> Here. and there we go so we will then bake that and put a little jump ring in between and there you have a very nice little pair of earrings the back of the earring will then also show your blend so that's not totally wasted and there we go thank you for joining me and we will do another one at a later date See you. Bye.